there's a bug. I'm good. But see, honey, if he stops, I'm gonna take him. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Gallagher, Muddy Outdoors, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Barnes, Ansman Batteries, and Antler Dirt. December 19th, second day of Missouri's muzzleloader season, which is late, of course, and Jerry was gracious enough to join me, but you know, I don't think Jerry really wanted to join me. He wanted to join the chase for this. What do you think, Jerry? I did. Ever since you've shown me this shed, you know, 93 inches. Got my fever up really good. Yeah. So if we take the standard, uh, maybe grew 10% a year, you know, if it's healthy, and the other side matched, another big if, and it's still alive. Those three ifs, we're looking at just a huge typical deer. Possibly a world record. Poss that's a good reason to save your tag for the late muzzleloader season. If I got pocket knife. Don't Hang some stands, do a little last minute scouting, shoot our guns, because you know when you're doing this, you don't want to say, well, gosh, I'd have wished I'd have shot. So we not only shot them, Jerry had them sided in before we got here, but we made sure they were still sided in after the five hour drive. Anytime you haul a gun around or on the airline or something, you need to shoot it. Guns are sided in, feeling really good about it. Um, and we went out, did some just quick scouting. Now our kind of strategies around this property has a big field, big feeding field, you know, like 40 plus acres right in the middle. And there's some bottlenecks getting that field around, some duck holes and the Mississippi River is pretty big bottleneck and an oxbow lake on the other side. So we're kind of just getting a feeling, getting a plan put together. And after Terry was telling us that he's seen this deer twice this season, you know, that's not a very big chance for to kill a deer like it in how many thousands of acres of timber and that's right. really thick cover after the after the ice storm. That's right. We've had storm. there's a huge ice storm here, so it's either open field or bedding area. There's really no in between. But we hung some stands and my strat my personal strategy is I know this time of year there's gonna be some fawns becoming receptive. And fawns are usually the first deer out in the field. So I'm gonna gamble to some extent on afternoon feeding hunts. What's your strategy, Jerry? Well, in the morning, I like to just catch them coming back out of those fields and get in some pretty thick cover where big bucks would hang. Mm -hmm. And this particular buck right here, you know, he had spotted uh, southwest of that big feed field and it's kind of a, a funnel headed down that way. And I just put a stand in the middle of that. There we go. So we're good to that hump where you see the tracks. That hump where it goes up and you see the tracks. So Adam and I have hung a stand for our first morning hunt overlooking a really small feeding plot, but that's really not the reason we're there. It's just a, a, an area there's a drain behind us and a road in front, so there's a little pinch point right there for deer to come through. And it paid off, but not with this. Maybe his grandsons, a couple of yearling bucks come through, see some does crossing in the distance, and a fat, fat raccoon coming up the road. How about you? Well, let's see, the first morning, you know, really didn't see too much. Uh, that evening was a little bit better. You know, we've seen a couple bucks, uh, probably shooter bucks, you know, one of them was a good, at least four year old mature buck. Uh, he was broke a little bit, but it was hard for me to pull the trigger the first evening, especially 
<laughs> we got something like this running around somewhere. I know what you're saying. came up the field from, from down there, the other end where you were at, right up by me, right in front of the stand. 65 right up turkeys, it sights me anywhere I know. <laughs> That's a lot of turkeys. They flew in, they flew up right there. Well, Adam and I go out at midday. We didn't really want to booger up that feeding area, just the timing that first day. So we go out at midday during our hunt and hang a stand based totally on that day's conditions. And Jerry, just as the plan sometimes works, does started pouring out, and I'm telling Adam, man, there's, there's gonna be a fawn out of all these deer that's gonna have someone wanting to date with her. And sure enough, unlike you, my goal is kind of four and a half year old or older mature buck. And it's getting a little late, and we're watching, watching, and, and I tell Adam, well, let's just, let's just kind of see what we see here. I'm gonna be able to do this. I got about a 200 yard range with this muscle hunter. Sided in, I Jerry Martin sided it in, and I shot it, and I got here to make sure it's familiar at 153 yards. Had a group about like that at 153, so the gun's great. Stay on him, stay on him. I'm on him. He's down. He's down. Adam. Killing tree. Killing tree. He was down. That's a good deer. Congratulations, buddy. I love a buddy. Give it to me. We did that. Turkeys come out. I was I counted 60 and, and I got confused about another big flock. So 60 plus, I'm saying close to 100 literally. Jerry Martin's right over there, about five, six hundred yards, and he's going, What did Grant shoot? That's what Jerry's saying right now. Man, I'm excited. Hey, let's go see what we got, brother. Let's go do it. He is rank 80. Big old deer. Nothing wrong with that toad, my goodness. Look at the size of that neck on him. Man, is he rank? I can smell him strong. He's got a big head on him. Yeah, big old blocky head. That's what we're looking for. That is a pretty, pretty deer right there. Yeah, big old blocky head. I love that coloration right there on bucks. Uh, that's pretty, nice. pretty. Yeah. That's pretty deer. Be going in your lodge. I'm gonna put him in there. Jerry, I just, ever since I've been a child, I find it thrilling to interact with a mature buck, but usually it's 
see buck, decide where to shoot buck, shoot buck or pass buck, and it's over, just moving through. You know how it is. But this buck, we actually got to watch for a couple of minutes. Watch him chase a doe, hear some grunting, make the good choice where to shoot, don't shoot, make a shot. Man, I love that. So it was worth it for me, four and a half year old buck. My Missouri gun tag is field done. Well, Grant, I do appreciate you inviting me down here to hunt a deer like this. I mean, I love big deer, love to hunt big deer, and whether they get it or not, the opportunity is awesome. Well, I've enjoyed, because I've learned from you on this trip also, so learning and interacting with creation is just something I really love. Hey, I hope you have a great week and a great new year. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv. Yeah. 20 mark at. How far we What'd you say? I said 22. I did 22. <laughs> <laughs> 22 on the <laughs>